Thank you, everybody, for joining us for today's webinar, LED and Beyond Slashing Energy Costs in Supermarkets. This webinar is actually the first in a three-part series on driving supermarket profits with lighting and controls. In this webinar, we'll take the next 20 minutes to look at how supermarkets are slashing energy costs by switching to LED, but also implementing lighting and building controls. In the second webinar, we look at how lighting designers use light and temperature to reinforce supermarket brands and to improve the customer experience, ultimately driving top-line growth. In the final webinar, we'll deep dive into controls and controls strategies that supermarkets actually value. Each webinar is hosted by an industry expert and is only about 20 minutes long. And best of all, you don't have to re-register for any of those other webinars. Uh, they're all on demand right now, and you can view them as soon as you're done here. So at the end of this we webinar, I'll provide some links and a bit more information. But back to today's webinar. While this is a recording, we still encourage you to use the Q&A function on the top left-hand side of your screen. We'll respond to you directly within 48 working hours. And if you have to jump off early, please take a few moments to fill out the exit survey. That's located on the right-hand side of your screen. It's just five questions and will help us continue to bring you more valuable content like this webinar series. We are so lucky to have today's presenter with us. John Dombrowski has over 20 years lighting experience working with some of the nation's largest supermarket retailers as the Director of Corporate Accounts here at Acuity Brands. He's been pivotal in helping retailers implement IoT and indoor positioning systems which we'll cover in future webinars. John has a wealth of knowledge on supermarkets and what they're doing right now. So if any time you have a question for John, please type it into the Q&A box, and we will email you back within 24 to 48 working hours. So with that, it's my pleasure to turn it over to John. John? Thank you, April. Uh, today we'll be sharing how our grocery customers are slashing their energy costs by going to LED and going beyond just lighting. Uh, in the next 20 minutes, we'll look at uh, what your traditional lighting is really costing you. Uh, then we'll look at how unifying your energy management systems are going to help streamline your operations and slash costs. Uh, and then we'll finish today's presentation on some tips to simplify your uh, supermarket LED relights. The first section that we'll be looking at today is the real cost of your traditional lighting system. The national average of energy consumption for a supermarket is about 50 kilowatts per square foot. That's enough electricity to power 200 homes in a year or to charge your electric car almost half a million times. We know that supermarkets traditionally have small margins, about 1% to 3% on average, which is lower than the rest of the retail industry. If you think that spending that much on energy is just the cost of doing business, then consider this from the, from the EPA. The EPA estimates that every dollar saved on energy is equivalent to increasing sales by $59 as far as the profit contribution to the bottom line. Generally, refrigeration is looked at as the largest energy expense within the supermarket. However, lighting and HVAC account for almost half of your energy expense um, and the reason why we tie these together is because they're all part of the building automation system. And also keep in mind, if you take a watt out of your system, that's a watt that you no longer have to cool or refrigerate if it's in the, you know, your walk-in cooler or freezer areas. So another way to look at this is that 39% of your energy spend is coming roughly um, towards refrigeration, and then 47% is for lighting and HVAC. What this means to the average supermarket as far as energy spend is in total spending about $313,000 a year on energy. Uh, so breaking that down further, that would be roughly about $122,000 goes towards refrigeration and $147,000 on lighting and HVAC. So looking at energy consumption through this lens, your largest energy bucket is, is lighting and HVAC um, as far as where supermarkets would need to spend the most energy. So this means that the average supermarket, again, is spending $313,000 a year on energy. So there's a large uh, area of opportunity 
to contribute to the bottom line by taking uh, some of this energy cost out of the system. So in addition to the uh, hard energy cost savings that uh, we see uh, supermarkets use to justify these projects, another hard cost that is used to help uh, push these projects forward internally as far as getting funding is maintenance cost or the cost of doing maintenance, particularly for lighting and HVAC. Um, it's recommended that supermarkets do preventative maintenance at least a couple times a year, um, you know, such things as checking on the coils, changing filters, you know, those types of things. Um, generally, this involves some type of professional, um, you know, getting onto a ladder, sometimes getting on top of rooftops, which increases, you know, safety risk, and also, of course, the cost of, of having them coming in in the first place. Um, in addition to that preventative maintenance, we have, co of course, spot spot maintenance when, when something does break. Of course, you have to call on a professional to get the uh, uh, issue fixed right away. Um, in our experience, we're also seeing supermarkets relamp, um, generally tradition fluorescent lamping, you know, at least every three years for the main sales floor. Of course, there's a lot of specialty lamps uh, that ha don't have that long of life, and they might be on a, a quicker cycle or, you know, a lot of spot relamping haps happens, which, of course, is generally a lot more expensive because of, uh, the person needs to be called in to, to do that spot relamping. Uh, so relamping is, is you know, also kind of a complicated um, thing when, when you have multiple lamps throughout the store um, and, you know, keeping track of those lamps and then, of course, um, purchasing, maintaining, and replacing those lamps are, are all a hard cost. Uh, and then there's the cost of, of, you know, the maintenance crew, which, again, um, you know, if you're responsible for the parking lot lighting, can require an expensive bucket truck uh, to get up there and maintain, you know, the lamps, the ballast, etc. cetera. Uh, the challenge with maintenance is you can't manage what you can't see. So you're very dependent on the store manager also as far as maintaining the look of that store. And, you know, it, it's hard to understand, you know, remotely if the system is performing well or not. Um, so that, that is an area of opportunity to also increase the visibility of how the store is operating uh, remotely. Want to see how your supermarket stacks up? At this time, you can click to request a free, no obligation energy audit of your supermarket. So in this section, we're going to uh, look at from a 30,000 foot view, how are supermarkets managing their lighting and HVAC cost? In the last three years, advancements in tech have made integration cost-effective for supermarkets. One of the major trends is that uh, systems have moved from analog to digital. Another trend is that the total cost of LEDs continues to drop as manufacturing efficiencies are gained, and the product itself has improved in uh, input watts and light output. Um, lighting and building management systems have become more economical to install, uh, especially as code drives volume and forces technologies to improve. Um, another one is software um, and visualization of energy management, such as dashboards, have become um, much more streamlined as advancements in the tech sector, software, et cetera, have um, improved and developed. Uh, keep in mind also that daylighting can be accomplished as part of uh, energy retrofit, especially if you have already existing open ceiling stores this is, uh, again, very easy to tie in the complete system now with lighting, energy, building automation system, et cetera. So please keep that in mind if you have uh, daylighting or would like to add daylighting to your current store. The of lighting and HVAC have surprised our supermarket customers in some unique ways. Uh, the first is energy savings. Um, they knew they would save energy, but they didn't realize how much. Um, with the uh, conjunction of using controls and building automation, uh, we're able to save up to 80% in energy. Uh, another one is slashing cooling cost. Since switching to LEDs uses considerably less wattage, uh, wattage equals heat. Um, so that's heat, of course, that doesn't need to be cooled. Uh, this is very uh, considerable in the walk-in coolers and walk-in freezer areas. Again, you don't need to refrigerate that excess wattage. So uh, that, that's a big benefit as well. Um, getting visibility to real-time performance has helped manage uh, maintenance as well. well. What I mean by this is uh, dashboards can be set up uh, to let you know exactly 
what lamps are working, what lamps are not working, what fixtures, etc. Um, and you're able to have that visibility and maintain um, remotely. Um, no, no longer do we have to have extra protection in lighting in certain areas to comply with food regulations. What we mean by this is in especially open food prep areas, uh, to meet code, you have to have lensed fixtures and or unbreakable lamps, or I should say self-contained lamps, uh, in case the fluorescent glass would break, uh, with LED fixtures, there there is not you know that glass, um, and inherently they're just safer. Uh, and generally, what we what we recommend in that area is lens. So, and meeting all the uh, local codes and food codes, um, and, and that's also been a side benefit because generally those type of either self-contained lamps and or fixtures in those areas have been traditionally very expensive. Uh, so again, an easy change to go to LED in those areas. Number five is energy monitoring for more effective management. Again, this can be set up uh, to meet your specific needs based on setting up the right dashboards, et cetera. Um, and the last one is what we're seeing is reduced spoilage. Um, again, where non-UV uh, light is being used with LEDs, uh, wherever UV, uh, especially you know, in the food and produce areas, um, we're seeing just the, the product last longer and not be affected because there's no UV coming out of the LED fixtures. So let's look at what unifying lighting and HVA systems mean. So let's take a, a look at what the first step would be. Uh, the first step would be to convert your system from fluorescent to LED or possibly from HID to LED. And the example of the energy savings we're going to look at over a 10-year life cycle and the savings that we're going to demonstrate are, are occurring over that 10-year life cycle. Uh, so the first area is strips is a, generally a common um, fixture that's used for the main sales floor. And if we look at using eight-foot strips, uh, about 250 units, um, traditionally, if you have a good fluorescent system, this would be at 112 watts. Uh, we can replace that on a one-to-one -one light level. Uh, 10,000 lumen um, eight-foot strip, LED strip, would only consume about 76 watts. So we're looking at, um, for strips, saving about $55,000 over that life cycle. Uh, so the next area that we would look at would be your troughers, two by two troughers, two by four troughers, et cetera. And what we did here was look at a typical three lamp fluorescent consuming about 85 watts, and we would recommend a 4,800 lumen product, which only consumes 38 watts. So again, incremental savings in those areas would be about 23,000. And we see these fixtures used um, generally along the perimeter, uh, the food prep areas, the back of the house, um, et cetera. Um, another area or typical fixture uh, that we see in uh, grocery are downlights. So in looking at your typical downlight, the most popular is a six-inch can, uh, which traditionally uses about two 26-watt compact fluorescent lamps. Uh, we can uh, That consumes, by the way, about 50 watts, and we would look at you know replacing that with a 2,000-lumen six-inch uh, LED product, which only consumes 22 watts. So... Again, we're, we're being very conservative with all of these as far as one-to-one -one light level replacements um, and energy. But, you know, we would look at um, about $6,000 uh, in energy saved there. So over the course of the store, if you were to place just the, just the lighting uh, to LED, we're looking at saving about $84,000 in energy. And if you recall our early example, in order to... Um, um, May, uh, increase profitability by that much, that would be equal to about $5 million in sales revenue. Um, so again, pretty substantial as far as what the effect on the bottom line would be for your stores. So step two in the unified solution would be to use integrated controls. So we would adopt a unified control strategy to save even additional energy. And some of the most popular areas that we focus on are number one is scheduling. So think time of day, before hours, after hours of stocking of shelves. We're able to reduce um, lighting and HVAC and save anywhere from 10 to 40%. Uh, another area that we look at is daylighting, whether you have 
skylights or um, generally stores have a, a large percentage of light at the front of the store. So depending on how much natural light you have coming into your facility or store, we would save anywhere from 5 to 15 percent uh, additional energy there. And then another area that we can save a tremendous amount of energy is occupancy sensing. Uh, we put sensors in, um, again, the, the back of the house, walk-in coolers, freezers. Uh, we see some uh, customers that like to put occupancy actually on the sales floor for the walk-in coolers. Um, I shouldn't say walk-in, but the, the coolers um, on the actual sales floor, people can uh, put occupancy sensors there to save energy. And depending on how aggressive we are with that strategy, we can get anywhere from 10 to 30% energy savings there. And then the last one that we see is demand response. Uh, this also um, is used a lot of times to meet code, uh, but we can save an additional 5 to 15% uh, by utilizing demand response strategies as well. Step three of a unified energy management system is to use software to manage and maintain the energy systems. Software is essential for managing multiple supermarket locations since it enables remote control, and real-time monitoring of lighting and the HVA system. Our customers find that this simplifies their operations and they're able to mean, um, build meaningful uh, dashboards that are relevant to their organization. We're all about simplifying around here, so let's look at some tools and programs out there to help you when you're ready to upgrade to a unified solution. We work with a lot of retailers, and in addition to the cost to relight, there's also risk. So we help them with finding and using the different rebate and utility incentives uh, like EPACT and give them tax rebate uh, information and we can really drive down the cost in general by taking advantage of all the programs that are out there. Um, we've seen paybacks that have come uh, just on new lighting come in under one year. Um, again, it's complicated uh, to roll this out nationally. That's why we have programs to simplify this, meaning um, Utilities each have their own program, so we have re rebate specialists that are able to take advantage of the utility programs that are currently existing across all 50 states. There are also, uh, we have trial installation programs, so that would re reduce the risk of how is the lighting actually going to look in your store. So at Acuity, you can get new lighting for up to 90 days and then return it if you're not 100% satisfied. So that would give you the ability to actually see what the uh, potential upgrade will look like in your actual environment. And, and then finally, there are financing and leasing options, so you can get the energy efficient solutions with zero down and flexible terms. So at Acuity, for example, we partner with financial service uh, firms, um, so our retail customers can start seeing a payback on day one. It's a really great option for supermarkets, um, again, because there's no capital outlay to start with. If you'd like more information about energy management solutions for your supermarket, click uh, confirm here. So let's quickly review what we discussed today. Uh, first is that lighting and HVAC account for almost half your energy expense, not to mention the maintenance and management cost. By reducing your energy just a dollar is equivalent to increasing your revenue by $59. So energy savings is a critical strategy in a low margin industry that grocery is. Uh, second is that recent technologies make it very cost effective uh, for unified lighting and HVAC um, to be put into a single platform in order to scale energy savings easily and across numerous stores. Uh, third, there are various ways to reduce the cost and risk associated with getting a new system. We touched briefly on rebates and tax incentives, trial installation programs, and financing and leasing options. So in summary, by slashing your energy cost, you can help increase your profitability overall, and that's what we're seeing supermarkets start to do. Wow, thanks, John, and thanks for everybody for joining us. If you have any questions for John, please type them into the Q&A box and we'll respond within 48 working hours. Also, if you can take a moment to fill the survey out that you see on the right-hand side of your screen, just more questions, shouldn't take you more than a minute, but it will really help us con to continue bringing you informative and valuable webinars like this one. Finally, don't forget to check out the other on-demand webinars for learning how to use lighting and controls to improve your supermarket sales and operations. To view the second webinar in this series, 
driving revenues in supermarkets with lighting design that delights, simply click on the link that you see on your screen, and you can start enjoying it right away. Like this webinar, it's about 20 minutes long, and you're already registered. If you don't have time right now, that's okay. We've emailed you this link a few times, and I'll go ahead and send another reminder with the link so you can view it in the future. And for those of you who are ready to deep dive into controls, including building management controls, you can simply click on the URL on the screen to access that 20-minute recording of our part three in our series, The Four Reasons Every Supermarket Needs Controls Now. Finally, if you'd like to receive additional information on anything you've seen here today, including uh, scheduling a free energy audit that John mentioned at the beginning of the session, or to speak with a rebate specialist, please click Yes here. Well, I think that does it for John and I. Thank you again for attending, and we hope to see you at the next Supermarket Webinar.